Rev up your engines! Today I'm going to talk about things that people used to do to their cars, but they should never do today if they don't want to damage their expensive car. Don't disconnect your negative battery terminal while the car is running to check to see if the alternator is charging correctly. Now back in the 1960s, that was totally acceptable. If you took the negative battery terminal off and a car continued to run, it would mean the alternator's charging and giving you enough electricity to run it. But don't do that on any modern car. Because by doing so, you can destroy computer modules. You can get over voltage, surges. Don't do it. You want your alternator checked? Have a mechanic check it with this little machine. Or an auto parts store. Or today, hey, you can even buy $49 ones yourself that work quite well. Just don't disconnect either battery terminal with the car running. On any modern car with computers, you can destroy this stuff. And the next thing is how to correctly jump start a car. You need cables but you need to connect them correctly and jump it correctly. And take your time, don't be in a hurry. You can connect the positive and negative of the jumper cables to the car that still runs that's gonna jump the other car. Easy enough, one on here and one on here. Then on the car that needs to be jump started, you put the positive on the positive terminal of the battery of the other car that won't start and you put the negative cable on any metal ground of the car. The reason you don't connect it directly to the battery cable on top of the battery is because if there is a spark when you connect the final connection, if there's any hydrogen gas that's lifting around, it can theoretically start an explosion. Now as you can tell, I work outside. I've never seen it happen myself because most of that gas is gonna dissipate into the atmosphere. But of course, if you're in an enclosed garage or something, sure, you know, there's more chance that the hydrogen gas will pool up and then start on fire. You wait about 10 minutes, that gives it a good charge. Turn off the car that's the good car that's jumping the other. You want it turned off. Then you try to start the dead car to see if it'll start. You don't want two cars running against each other connected by cables. You got an alternator in one that's running, and if the other car does start up, you have two of them running against each other. It can destroy electronics in modern cars. I can think of numerous times that customers brought cars over here and I said, ah, your electrical system's all messed up. And they said, well, last night a guy in a tow truck, he revved his engine up real big, then he jump-started our car and it started up and it ran there for five minutes. That five minutes was destroying the electronics of your car. Don't do that. Only have one car running when they're both connected together. Now, the next thing not to do is when you're filling your car with gas and the gas pump shuts itself off, don't top it off. Just stop right there. I know for a fact there's a lot of obsessive compulsive people out there that, oh, I gotta round it off to $20, but that can damage your EVAP system on the car. Here's how that works. The EVAP system keeps gasoline vapors from getting into the atmosphere and polluting things. One of the main parts of it is the charcoal canister. That filters the vapor, so if there are gasoline vapors, they go through the filter, and the only thing that comes out the other end is clean air. If you keep topping it up after it shuts off, you can end up spilling raw gas into the EVAP system, and a charcoal canister will be ruined because it's only made to take gasoline vapor, not raw liquid gasoline. And you might think, oh, it's just a canister <laughs> on some cars. It can cost you over a thousand bucks. You gotta pull the gas tank off. You gotta do all kinds of things. Basically, you wanna stay away from getting any raw gasoline. Once the pump shuts off, just take it out and pay whatever it is. I mean, heck, most of us are using credit cards anyway, so it doesn't matter whether we round it off or not. We're not getting change. Now, another thing that people often used to do that they should never do anymore is drive the car till it runs out of gas. My advice is once you get under a quart of a tank, start thinking about filling it up with gas. Now in the olden days, again, it didn't mean much because they had mechanical fuel pumps that were bolted to the engine. And if you ran out of gas, you couldn't suck any more gas, the car would die, but it would do no damage. But modern cars, they have electric fuel pumps that are inside the gas tank. What actually lubricates the bearings is gasoline. They're soaked in gasoline, and the gasoline lubricates the pump as it's running. If you actually do run out of gas, that pump then sucks air instead of gasoline, and you can burn the fuel pump out. 
in many cars these days it's over a thousand bucks to drop the gas tank and to replace a very expensive electronic fuel pump module don't drive them till they run out of gas anymore and another thing that people used to do that you should never do anymore is don't put any type of lubricating oil in your gas tank to mix with the gas unless you have a two-stroke motor and really in the united states they don't have any cars with two-stroke motors anymore people used to use lube was called top end lube to lubricate the valves and stuff they'd pour a bottle of it in the gas tank and then drive it around well these days if you do that that can ruin your catalytic converter ruin the oxygen sensors let's say you got an old clunker that's all carboned up you can pour some fuel injector cleaner in there that's made to go into gasoline but don't think you need to put any kind of oil lubricant in your gas tank that will then lubricate the engine as you drive you don't do that in any modern car now the next thing that people used to do that you shouldn't do anymore is don't over inflate your tires in the olden days guys used to put a little more pressure in their tires better gas mileage there was less rolling resistance but in those days tires were perfectly round now we got radial tires we got tires that you look at them they sit kind of squashed look at my wife's lexus tire you see the bottom looks kind of squashed down in the olden days in the 60s people would say oh it needs air it's getting low but not anymore that's how most tires sit it's just important that you put the correct pressure in them you get your pressure reading in this case i usually put about 32 psi in all the tires now i check it with a gauge because you can't really tell by looking at them and the next thing is use the right coolant for your car when i was a young mechanic there was one kind of coolant it was green it went in all cars well now there's all sorts of different coolants make sure you're using the right one for your vehicle and you just don't go by color it's all dyes anyways i mean the green antifreeze is green because they dyed it they come in all different colors now even similar coolants have different colors so you just research what your car takes and use that same kind you can find aftermarket ones as long as they're rated the same you can use them buy the highest quality one that you can it lasts the longest if you find that your car can take a seven year 150,000 mile coolant use that because then you don't have to think about it for seven years or 150,000 miles and it's not much and the last thing i'm going to talk about that people used to do that they should never do anymore is use the correct oil for your car don't use the wrong type as an example decades ago when everybody was driving around and push rod v8 engines as the engine wore you could use a little bit heavier viscosity oil to compensate for the wear let's say 20 w30 uh you could go to like a 2040 or a 2050 and it could slow down oil burning but you don't want to do that in a modern car because they have variable valve timing they have tiny little holes a zero w20 oil which is very light you want to stick to that oil well, I have seen people they put a heavier oil on them sometimes the cam would go out sometimes the variable valve timing systems would break you don't want to change the oil on those because they were designed for a very specific lightweight oil and if you put a heavier weight one in you're gonna have problems and normally it's right on the oil cap it'll say use zero w20 energy conserving oil or whatever stick to that oil and as a side tip that i've always believed in if you're using one type of oil continue to use that same oil if you have no problems because they have various additives that are put in by law here in the united states but each company also has other ones that they never really tell you exactly what each one has what percentages and what kind so if your car's working good on one oil my advice is stick to that oil and use it for the life of the car so now you know things that people used to do to their cars that you shouldn't do anymore with a modern car if you want it to last as long as possible and have the smallest amount of problems while you're driving down the road trying to enjoy your life so if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos Remember to ring that bell.